cancelled ties. Any unattended baggage will be removed and may be destroyed by security services. Good evening ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Dead Rail live stream starting on time tonight at 20.30. Tonight doing the class 465 Raynham to Gravesend in Trains in World 2 starting in about 9 minutes time. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Mind the gap.
Good evening ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stream. We will be starting on time in approximately four minutes. Please have your drinks and light refreshments ready. And if you know anyone that might enjoy this stream, please do feel free to share it. We will be starting in, oh, about three and a half minutes now. Passengers are reminded that smoking is prohibited at all stations and on all train services. This includes e-cigarettes. Good evening, everybody. How are we doing? Richard here from DadRail, but of course you already knew that. And welcome to another live stream. Two streams in two days. What am I doing to you? Spoiling you all rotten. Uh, we are doing Train Sim World 2, and we are doing the Class 465 today on a uh, short run from Raynham down to Gravesend. Uh, I've played this route quite a lot, but not with the 465, so it uh, should be nice, sort of a nice... Um, casual run. We'll see how we get on with that. Then if we've got time, we might jump in the 375 and do something in that as well. So we're going to be doing all the usual things tonight. We're going to be playing Locomotive Location Livery. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. And tonight's picture has been provided by Blob. 
Um, I've, I, I think you've got a good chance of getting this one tonight. I mean, you always do, but I think you've got an, an extra good chance tonight of getting this one. And we're going to be jumping in and out of the Discord server as always. Hayden S there with some nice 43 action. And an 08. Is that an 08 or an 09? I never know the difference between the two. Uh, and as always, guys, if you want to post in the Discord, you can do. There is a link in the description below. So, shall we jump into the game? Oh, before we jump into the game, I almost forgot. <laughs> all the opinions expressed within this video are sold on my own, blah, 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 and all of that good stuff. Right, now we can jump into the game. So, class 465, so 4659. Uh, we want to do Raynham. Raynham to London Charing Cross. Uh, yeah, we only get to go as far as Gravesend because obviously the route then goes on to the high speed. It'd be really good if we had the remainder of the route into London. That would be that would be pretty awesome. But uh, alas, we don't. Is it loading or is it crashed? So it's something spinning round in the corner. It's loading. Perfect. Right, as it's only a half hour run, before we get before we go. Why not play around? Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. There she is, four six five nine zero oh, four. Lawrence Adams, good evening. Z blocked. British film guy had to give this one a watch. Pep EMU fan, yeah, the four six five is excellent to drive as always on Trains and Worlds. GJ Barnuff, hello, Fabian. Pig and Bob, good evening. Lots of you in tonight. It's great to see so many of you here. Jonathan, good evening. Right, I'm going to pause that. <laughs> Tier 9 train spotting. You are the third one on my screen with number 14. Let's, Let's play. play. Locomotive delivery location. I uh, see. I, I quite like it when they come out like this because it's kind of leaves a little bit to the imagination there, doesn't it? It, it could be a, it could be a one of many things. Do let me know what you're thinking, guys, and we shall play some train sim. Right here we go. Let's get this thing set up. So where are my safety systems? They're up here, aren't they? So um, normal, normal. Some DSD, TPWS. Um, my AWS is somewhere different on these, isn't it? I believe. Is that on one of the MCBs? AWS. There we go. On. Okay. Key in. Into f neutral. And acknowledge the AWS there. Hayden S. Class 185 TPE. Exploring all the UK stations by train. Super Voyager. Laser Jet. Azuma. Northern Princess. That is a good one indeed. Right. Unlock doors. And um, we've better put some headlights on as well, I guess. That would be a pretty good idea. So where are we stopping today? Uh, T, isn't it, on this? Yep. Uh, Gillingham, Chatham, Rochester, uh, Higham, Strood Higham, and Gravesend. I've, I've got to get my mouse sorted out, guys. The scroll wheel is just going mental. It just doesn't work properly. Uh, Max's Journeys, Models and More. Move, I think, or Transpennite Azuma. Max's Journeys, Nova, I think. Z Block, Class 390, White Livery, Stoke on Trent. TR9 Train Spotting, 397. Good evening, William. I'm very good. How are you, bud? Defo, a 397 or an 80X, says JR Jaden Railways. Uh, laser jet, dad rail, do GBRF operate to exit to Riverside Yard? I'm not entirely sure, to be honest with you. That's uh, way off of my patch. Okay, lock doors. Here we go. That's the cab light. It's down here somewhere. It's the one that's sticking out. Into forward. And off we go. Hey, we got it to move first time. That is progress. 
Train spotting carp fishing game. I just finished my driver training for LNER. Fantastic, bud. How did you find the training? I'm, gu I'm guessing all went well for you. Uh, Daniel, good evening, my friend. Uh, I'm good, thank you. Mumrail is at work today. She um, works for the NHS. She's had, she's had a few weeks off, um, sort of after moving house, a few months off after moving house to sort of find a new childcare arrangements. But yeah, Mumrail is back at work. Jonathan, I think Train Sim World 2 needs a GSMR system. Yeah, I, I completely agree. It'd be nice if the trains just had it working as standard. Okay, we're going to have a little bit of a running brake test. Are the dynamic brakes isolated? It sounds like the dynamic brakes are isolated on this. Uh, can we unisolate them? No, regen is on. I can hear it now. Sound files bugging out. <laughs> Max's journeys models and more. Can you do a stream with a five circle line in Train Sim 2022? Uh, yeah, I can do that for you. No worries at all. I can arrange that for. Uh, I'm going to be doing a German one next week, uh, but I can certainly arrange that hopefully for the week after. That's very kind of you, William. Thank you. I shall, I shall pass that on. Yeah, Nat, definitely much more visibility on this train. Um, yeah, the cabs are actually pretty cramped in real life. I used to sign these, uh, never on the main line, but as a shunter driver I used to sign these. And the cabs are getting in and out, they are pretty cramped. But yeah, the, the visibility out the front is much better than like a 375. Right, we have a warning for a 16. 1.74 for Gillingham. Maxwell Wind Shepherd Dadra, why did you start YouTube? Um, that's a pretty good question, Max. And I, I started Dad Rail. <laughs> I'm sure you, some of you may have heard this story before, but um, Dad Rail was originally started as a model railway project that I was doing with my sons, hence the name Dad Rail. I was going to build a model railway with the kids. And I got planning permission from uh, Mum Rail to build it, but it never happened. And I had the channel, so I started uploading content and the, the name's kind of just stuck in the short term. So, uh, yeah, I, that's the reason I started YouTube. But then I met um, Jeff Marshall doing all the stations and stuff, and he sort of inspired me to start putting some vlogs and bits and bobs together, and sort of, yeah, sort of just evolved from there, really. Right, what are we doing? Warning for a 60. We're already down for that, but we do have a 50 coming up. Gillingham is not far off. So let's put step one in at the AWS magnet for the signal before the station. I think that should bring us in pretty well. We may need a little bit of two. That's bringing us in way too quickly. I need to adjust that braking point. Maybe try um, try next time the level crossing. It is little things you pick up like that when you're driving in real life. So, you know, I've sort of picked my braking point, but it's too early. So next time I drive the route, I'll, uh, I shall amend that. Uh, Keith Jones, I'm surprised nobody has asked what the little red button on the power handle is for. Are you asking, Keith, or are you... Uh, or are you just wondering why other people haven't asked? Yeah, the sounds on this are, are really nice. A bit short of the mark there, but uh, we won't worry about that. And into neutral, of course. Because I should be, I should be driving properly. Dave Flavel, hello, Jonathan. What would you like to see AP do a pack on? That's a that's a really good question, Jonathan. And 
train wise i'm i'm not too sure what i would like to see i'd, I'd maybe an update to the 66 because the ap66 is is not great in my opinion um so that that would be quite nice but yeah i one thing i would like in train sim classic is like a a tree and foliage enhancement pack. I don't, I don't even know if that's possible, but yeah, just something to make the trees and trees look a bit better would be great. Fabian, which brake setting do you use for the three seven sevens? I find the first knot a bit a bit weak to brake. Um, I was taught, Fabian, when I was learning to drive. My instructor taught me always stop at every station in brake step one. If you need two or three, you're coming in too fast. So you would pick your braking point, and basically, if we go into forward, that helps, doesn't it? Uh, green, if we go. We are good for 50. Yeah, so you'd pick your braking point in such a way where you can apply the brake, brake step one, and leave it alone. And then you want to sort of be, the time you hit the platform, you'll be down to about 30 miles an hour from that braking point. So if you're always using brake step one to brake, then you've got two and three in reserve if you need them. But yeah, brake, brake step one, brake step two. Some drivers will drive sort of brake step two initially. In actual fact, on 377, Southern's driving policy during low adhesion season states an initial brake application of brake step two. Um, but yeah, gem, generally, generally speaking, one and two. Right, we are heading towards Chatham, so let's play. Post, Post your, your numbers, numbers now, now for locomotive livery location. location. Crouching Tiger Hidden Lamb. Hi Deborah, I hope you are well. I saw a pallet of energy drinks at Oxford Station going into a staff room. What's your opinion on energy drinks? Um, unfortunately, I do occasionally drink an energy drink. I've normally got one in my bag. They do help to combat fatigue as long as you're not dependent on them. Um, I think if you're dependent on energy drinks, then uh, as a train driver, if you're dependent on energy drinks, then you probably need to reevaluate your lifestyle. Um, I always carry one in my bag though, because if you're out on a train and you start feeling tired, they, they do kind of they kind of bring you back a little bit. Right, 156 Andrew, you are the third one on my screen with number six. We'll get into Chatham and then we will play. Because if I try and do it going into Chatham, I'm going to overshoot the station. Yeah, Northern Princess. It does. Um, it does depend on sort of the individual traction and the route and the timetable. Um, yeah, some trains you will need to drive in sort of brake step two, 50% brake. Um, the route I was taught to drive on the Hastings line, sort of, there was a lot of time, a lot of, sort of um, yeah, a, a lot of, a lot of time in the timetable, so you sort of could drive like that. But yeah, yeah, brake, brake step one, brake step two is probably sort of where you want to be. Incidentally, I think the brakes on this network are uh, way too sharp. There is our four and eight car mark. And if I'm driving properly, I'm going to go into neutral and go, we are a four car on the four car mark, doors on the left. And why that is doing that. Let's play locomotive delivery location. And we are going with uh, 156 Andrew's suggestion of box number six. What are we getting from that, guys? I think that's kind of that's kind of putting us in the uh, the AC traction category, I would say. Do let me know your thoughts, and we'll also jump in the Discord server because passengers are still loading. Oh, laser jet, lovely GBR sixty six. Joshua R, oh, the side of a networker at the Na National Railway Museum. It's been many many years since I've been to the National Railway Museum. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, as I've mentioned before, with the National Railway Museum, we are planning a trip there uh, in August. So if you are about August the 13th, it would be absolutely great um, to see you at the National Railway Museum. 
Okay, lock doors. Into forward. We have a green signal. We are good for 30 at the moment, up to 80. So I'm just going to take power notch 2. Because um, all we can do is 30, so there's no point taking full power. President Reagan, thank you very much for your super chat. Is there any difference in driving an AC versus a DC train? I'd also love to see you drive an APT in the game if possible. Does ATP work in the, tr in the uh, game? I assume APT you mean like advanced passenger train? I'm not sure if there's one in... There's definitely not one in Train Sim World. I, I just imagine there would be in Train Sim Classic. Um, so the main difference between driving an AC and a DC train is trains are a lot quicker, tend to be a lot quicker on AC. Um, AC is 25,000 volts, whereas DC is only 750 volts. Um, so there's a lot more powerful power available on AC. Um, other, other than that, not really. There's sort of certain different rules and stuff that you need to be aware of um, when you're driving AC versus DC traction, such as neutral sections on the overhead lines. Um, your personal track safety course that everybody has to take who works on the track. There are... Um, there are differences in the classifications for AC and DC, so your, your license has to be endorsed with either AC or DC, depending on the area you work in. So, yeah, no, it, it, it does depend. Jack Newell, thank you very much for your pledge, bud. Much appreciated. So, coming into Rochester, 20 mile an hour coming up. Ray for the train spot. Hello, welcome to the stream. There is our 30. We're well under that. 20 is beyond the platform. I think that's as we go round the, across the bridge, maybe. Trains for life, Jack. I play Train Sim World 2 with no HUD. Yeah, if you've if you've learnt your routes really well, Jack. Um, Trains for life, Jack. Then you can play it with no HUD. And I think it's actually really, really rewarding when you can drive a route, keep time, and not have the HUD on. I find that is, is really rewarding. It's a really nice way to play the game. Uh, Edward Evans, APT is in train sim. Right, we will uh, we'll have to look into that for sure. Yeah, Sloffy, I used to sign 395s as a shunter driver. Um, yeah, never got to drive them on the main line though. Same with networkers, I used to sign networkers as a shunter driver. Um, but never drive, drove them on the main line. So, into neutral... We are a four-car train. We are stopped. Can't see the car marker. We're on the S car mark, and we are platform on the left. I was watching one of Joe's videos earlier, the British Ace. He was doing the um, Tees Valley because it's had a few updates on it. It's, it's one route I don't own, and there was speculation. He was speculating in that stream that there is a possibility Dovetail Games are going to be producing a pacer. Um, for train sim world I, I've i not heard anything about that previously, that's sort of the first I've heard about it but yeah, I, a, a pacer would be awesome what sort of uh, what sort of routes and trains would you guys like to see put into train sim world be quite, be quite interested to hear your thoughts on that Super Family Gaming hello uh, TL9 Trainspot, I'm going to play Tracing World 2 Bakerloo Line with no HUD. You're normally alright with the stations on the Bakerloo Line because your brakes are so good, but I always find it's learning the speeds is really hard on that. Lock doors, green signal into forward. And we're 30 down to 20. Trains for Life Jack, what happens if you overshoot a platform? Uh, if you overshoot a platform... Uh, any any excuse to play that. <laughs> Tea and biscuits with your manager. Um, no, seriously, it depends on how much you've overshot the station. If you've just overshot your car mark but the whole train's in the platform, that's not going to be such an issue. Um, however, if you've put like one or two coaches off the train, Depending on what type of train it is, you may be able to locally isolate those coaches on the um, the door controller. So you could open all the doors on the train, but just keep the ones that are off the platform locked. Um, in some cases, Signalman will let you set back into the platform. So if your overrun's less than, I want to say it's a mile and a quarter, 
if you've over on the station by less than a mile and a quarter, or it might be quarter of a mile, I, I'm not sure. Don't drive passenger trains anymore, I do freight. But yes, in some cases you'll be allowed to change ends and set back into the platform. Normally what's going to happen though is it's going to be tea and biscuits for your manager, carry on to the next station and uh, inconvenience the passengers. <laughs> Robert, what's the worst thing you've done? that you're comfortable to say while driving for South Eastern. Yeah, I made a video about that. I, I took a wrong route. Which, okay, 50-50 blame with the, uh, between me and the signaller. So we used to work diversionary services. So our standard route coming into Strood, four car train. Our standard route from um, Hastings was up to Tunbridge Wells, Tunbridge, then via Sevenoaks and Orpington to London Bridge. Uh, some days, we used to divert Tunbridge, Red Hill, East Croydon, London Bridge, Charing Cross. And on this day I was working one of those services and coming out of London, so I've stopped at Charing, I've, I've left Charing Cross, uh, Waterloo East, London Bridge. Coming down from London Bridge I should have taken a route indicator to take me over to the central side to head down towards New Cross Gate and, New, and uh, Norwood Junction. But for whatever reason I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> the signal was signalling me straight on, straight down the main line. Um, I should have stopped and questioned the signal, but I didn't. I just took it and carried on. Um, but the line was closed for engineering work, so I was unable to reach Tunbridge or Hastings via that particular route. So that required me to stop my train, contact the signaller. Uh, I then had to walk through the train, doing what they call the walk of shame, into the back cab, drive the train the wrong way back into London Bridge, which is kind of like driving a train, driving a car down a, the wrong way down the M25 sort of thing. It's really quite bad. I <laughs> pull it back into London Bridge, change ends and have another go. So yeah, sort of 50-50 blame. It's partly the signalist's fault, 4 car, 812. It's partly the signalist's fault for giving me the route, but it's also partly my fault for taking it. Yeah, the there is a vid about that, the day I went the wrong way. So yeah, Robert, I blame the signalman on that. It's 50-50 on the blame, Robert, to be honest with you. Dad Rouse, stop fanning the brakes. <laughs> right, guys, should we play again? Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. And we'll jump into the Discord as well. Who is playing SimSig? I do like a bit of SimSig. My, my favourite map on SimSig has been discontinued now, but it was Southampton. It used to be a really good one. I, I need to get back into SimSig. And GWR trains for to free Greater Anglia trains at Norwich. Uh, trains for Life, Jack, Richard, how do you know when the whole train has passed the speed board? Largely guesswork. Um, lock doors. Some trains, like the Class 66, for example, do have train length counters in them. So you press a button um, as you go past the speed board, and it'll tell you when the back of the train's clear. Providing you've programmed the correct length into the thing in the first place. We are interlock, we are green. Yeah, so some, some trains will tell you, but largely it is guesswork. Uh, Jonathan, you are the third number on my screen with number 10. Let's play. Let's, Let's play. play. Locomotive delivery location. Uh, I've got a funny feeling this one's going to give it away. Maybe not the location yet. Nobody's got the location. <laughs> Any ideas, guys? What? What? Do let me know what you're thinking. Do let me know what you're thinking. Uh, Maxwell, that was me playing SimSig. That's the Brighton simulation. CP train SimSig stream when? Right, we're in Strood Tunnel. Let's get her going. Next stop is Higham. Uh, exploring all the UK stations by train, TP397, Laserjet TPE, Daniel's Trains, TP802, Class 397 says TR9, Edward Evans, TP802 at Preston, 156 Andrew, 397 at Carlisle. Lots of good guesses there. Wait for Westgate, says Crouching Tiger Hidden Evans. So 
So maximum speed on this train is 75. We're good for 70 at the moment. We are in um, Strood Tunnel. Just said we're good for 70 and I'm speeding. How bad is that? Uh, incidentally, I am told this used to be a canal tunnel. I'm not sure how true that is. I would need to do some Googling. And I believe if this gap wasn't here in the middle, this would constitute uh, one of the longest tunnels in the country. Other than the sort of London high speed tunnels and underground and that sort of thing. So we are now in Higham Tunnel. And our station is pretty much as soon as we come out of the tunnel. Dad for our GCR Street went. Beefy 125, Preston. Someone just walked behind me just trying to find out what's going on. That's my son Andy. Your dinner's in the microwave. <laughs> Spaghetti bolognese, very nice of us too. Yeah, the brakes on this network are definitely far too good. Far too good. Four for the four. Haven't needed brake step three once in this stream. I'm doing well. One for the stop. We are into neutral. To do our three steps trek, we are a four car train on the four car mark. Doors on the left. I think we're a four car train. We are. Yeah, I've already checked that, haven't I? <laughs> oh. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Right, what is going on in the chat? What have I missed out on? There's 66 of you lovely people in tonight. If you haven't already, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing. That would be absolutely brilliant. Uh, I am trying to catch up with the chat here. Um, the Gaming Rascal was stuck on a class 720 for half an hour outside Braintree. There was a wiring fault with one of the PASCOM alarms and it could not be reset. Oh dear, doesn't sound good. Edward Evans, I just renumbered 802. Remembered 802s don't run on the West Coast Mainline, so I'll guess 397 at Carlisle. Zblocks went train spotting at Colchester today. Robert, how to make the job feel less boring, mainly as a southeastern driver? Oh, that's a that's a very good question, Robert. I got asked that question in my interview, and the way I would answer that is by saying, I don't think you can make the job less boring. Boredom boredom is a mindset. You can't, you can't change the job, but you can change your mindset. And I think it's more about, uh, we are good to go, into forward, next stop, Gravesend, green signal. I think it's more about making sure that the boredom doesn't take over from your need to maintain attention, if that makes sense. So I think by you know breaking the journey down into shorter sections, instead of thinking, oh my god, I've got three hours to the end of my shift, I've got to go all the way to London, I've got to do this, you're sort of thinking, you know, I've got to go to this bit, then this bit, then this bit. So you break it down into smaller sections. Um, commentary driving helps you maintain concentration, just, just say what you see. Um, if I'm being honest, I used to I used to kind of sing in the cab, you know, just sort of yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's sort of lot, lots you can do. You, I mean, you can't turn a radio on or anything like that, which is unfortunate. I mean, lots of drivers think you should be able to, me included. Um, so it's just about sort of maintaining concentration and working out what works for you. But yeah, it, it can get it can get pretty boring at times. I've been playing too much train sim, like pressing B for the pressing B for the other horn rather than here. Yeah, my only complaint on this is that Hu Junction, is that I'm speeding, is that Hu Junction looks absolutely terrible. Uh, exploring all the UK stations by train. Richard, do you do a low tone or high tone when approaching a foot crossing? Uh, rule book requirement is low tone only, but most drivers or some drivers will do both tones. Um, it's low tone only between the hours of 0600 and midnight. 
Max's Journeys, Models and more. We'll be at Gravesend in three miles, which is where this service will terminate. Uh, we may, I think we probably will jump into a 375 and have a little game, one of those. Keith Jones, if you love the job, you will not get bored. I I do agree to some extent, Keith, but the the novelty of driving trains wears off pretty quickly. And I really enjoy my job. Don't get me wrong, I do enjoy my job. But when you're doing sometimes the same routes day in day out, the same signalling sequences day out, you know you can get it can get monotonous. Fabian, does pointing signals help? Uh, that's that's a pretty good question, Fabian. Actually. Um, the Japanese do it, don't they? You sort of see them saluting the signals. It is all to do with commentary driving. You sort of physically having the, you know, you sort of you see the signals yellow. If you just acknowledge that in your mind, you just think one yellow. You sort of, you know, you've acknowledged it. But if you go, you say out loud one yellow, you've then got some verbal feedback. So you're hearing your own voice. If you point as well, you've then got a physical action to go with that. So you're you're more likely to remember it, it's more likely to stay in your working memory. So yeah, I think it can definitely, definitely can help. Robert, when are you going to make the GSMR vid? <laughs> that is coming, that is coming. Uh, 156 Andrew, Richard, have ever driven through Clapham Junction? Yeah, quite a few times. Uh, Clapham Junction is very much on my route card, I should be driving through there this week actually, I'm doing um, I'm a four Yankee one nine Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this week, and so I, I'm actually on um, a ballast job at Clapham Junction on Friday. Train lover one two three, welcome to Dan Rail, new subscriber. Michael, GW train spot, Devro, you inspired me from the London Transport Race, so I did one in Swindon on Saturday and completed in just under three hours. Excellent. Right, I've got absolutely no excuse for the poor driving now because I signed this section of the route. Uh, Maxwell, gotta be the East Coast way with the 313. One yellow. Red is at the end of the platform. 30 mile an hour into the platform. The Game of Rascal. With South Eastern, did you only drive Hastings to Charing Cross or did you sign other routes and units? As a mainline driver, Hastings to Charing Cross was my route. Um, we also signed the diversion route, so Charing Cross via Red Hill um, and East Croydon. 30 starts a bit further up in real life. That's my excuse for that. So yeah, it, it will depend on what depot you're based at, so you won't necessarily sign the whole of South Eastern. You'll only sign the routes that your depot operate. Uh, CP Trains, 4 Yankee 1 9. I believe it's going to be a 69 on it, but I'm not entirely sure. Twenty for the AWS magnet. Red ahead. There's no four car marks in in this game. You know we shouldn't be stopping this far down the platform. There we go. Right, break step three. DRA on into neutral. We are a four car train on the four car mark platform on the left. I suppose we better play a game. Post, Post your, your numbers, numbers now, now for, for locomotive, locomotive livery location. location. Uh, trains for life, Jack. Another question. Do all speed limits have an AWS warning if the reduction is quite a lot? Uh, I believe, again, I'm not 100% sure on this, that the reduction has to be at least one third in order to warrant a Morpheus board, a Morpheus board, and an AWS warning. Laser jet, what happens if you break down in the tunnel? Um, to be to be completely honest with you, laser jet, the GSMR radio does work in tunnels. So you just basically you, you could contact the signal or contact your control via the GSMR radio. Right, uh, Nat Parks, you are the third one in with number eight. 
Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Revealing box number eight. Oh, I think I, I think I think that's definitely given the train away. Definitely. Cheltenham train spotter. Do drivers ever honk randomly because they are bored? That's a pretty good question. <laughs> uh, no. All the uh, horn, all the horn action, is recorded on the um, OTMR download box. So. If you were constantly blowing the horn, then your manager's going to have something to say about that for sure. So, yeah, ge generally not. Uh, Jason Bushell, thank you very much. Much appreciated. Uh, the Gaming Rascal, what are the different types of train drivers? You said mainline drivers, so what does that mean? So, uh, the Gaming Rascal, generally speaking, a mainline driver is anybody who drives a train on network rail infrastructure. You'd, you'd say they were a mainline driver. Um, you sort of have metro drivers like London Underground drivers and the like, and the likes of that. Some companies will break that down further. So like on South Eastern, you'd have mainline drivers and metro drivers. So metro drivers would do like the inner London work. Mainline drivers would be like on the long coastal routes. And then you'd have high speed drivers. So it's, it's kind of, there's not, there's not a strict meaning for the term. But generally speaking, I would say anyone who drives trains on the mainline railway, on network rail infrastructure, would be classed as a mainline driver. As opposed to like a depot driver or a um, shunter driver. 156 Andrew says easy. <laughs> 156 Andrew, 397 at Carlisle. Keith Jones, Trans Pennine Express. Ooh. Edward Evans, you go for it, bud. You go for it. A what? Nor uh, a Morpheus board, Northern Prince. It's, it's a Morpheus board or a Morpheus board. It's an upside down triangle that's got the. Um, that has the speed in it, the warning speed that's coming up. Okay, right, how did we get on? So I'm getting so caught up in the chat, I'm forgetting about the game. Silver medal, that's not too bad, I'll take that. I think that's because we were probably a bit late, weren't we? Should we have a little... I've, I've got a supporters-only stream starting at uh, 21.30. Um, if you want to access a supporters-only stream, you want to find out more about that, then you can do over my uh, Patreon page. Um, so we've got about another 10 minutes or so. So we have a little look at... What is on offer for the um, 375? See if there's a, a nice short run for that that we can have a look at. And we need to finish locomotive location livery. I mustn't forget. Uh, Gillingham to London, Victoria. That's 10 minutes. Is anything a little bit longer? 15 minutes, something in that sort of. Uh, take this service originated from Gillingham to London, Victoria. We'll, we'll we'll do that little bit in the 375, and then we'll be wrapping it up. Thomas, it's pronounced Morpeth board. Gets the name from a rather sharp curb at Morpeth on the East Coast Main Line. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, King E.T., as a train driver, do you blow your horn for going in and out of tunnels? That used to be a rule book requirement, King E.T., but no longer. Unless there's a whistle board there, you wouldn't do that. It's no longer a requirement. Okay, where are we? Let's get the train set up first of all. We are at Gillingham. Safety systems in. So as a rule, all of the safety systems would normally be in. You would, If you got on a train and there was a safety system out, you'd be phoning a fitter before you moved the train. You wouldn't take it. They're only sort of put out for game purposes. So yeah, as, as a rule, you never ever, you've got no reason to touch these buttons at all uh, unless there's a fault with a safety system. I, I don't think I've actually driven the 375 in this. Spent many hours inside these. <laughs> Right, so we are an eight-car train. We are on the eight-car mark, and the platform is on the right. Good practice to get up out of the seat and open the platform on the right. Open the doors on the um, offside there. So let's have another go, shall we? Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Uh, a train spotted from Berkshire Deborah. What is the difference between passenger and freight brake timings on a train? That is a very, very good question. Um, 
passenger timings the brakes will apply and release a lot lot quicker goods timings the brakes come on a lot slower I'm told the reason for that is historically on the freight trains you'd have a lot of unbraked wagons so you'd want the brakes to apply slower so you allow the, the wagons to bunch up at a slower pace when you apply the brakes on a freight train the um, brakes on the front of the train will apply before the back of the train if that kind of makes sense you, you apply the brakes you're going to get brake force on the locomotive and the wagons at the front are going to come on the first wagon then the second then the third then the fourth then the fifth and so on and so forth if you're in passenger timings the brakes are going to come on really really quickly so if you imagine you've got like seven eight wagons that have got brakes on them and you've got ten wagons with no brakes if you're in uh, passenger timings the brakes are going to come on really quickly and all those wagons with no brakes are then sort of just going to be banging into the back whereas if you're in goods timings the brakes are going to come on really slowly which is going to give everything a chance to sort of bunch up in a lot lot smoother fashion so a majority of trains we operate now are in passenger timings but there are still still some wagons that do run around in goods timings um, driving a goods timed train goods timed train brake timings can be a complete and utter pain in the bottom to be perfectly honest with you um, because yeah it, it, the brakes just take so long to come on and off I'll see if I can get a little video actually of the brake gauge on there right wait until 6.16 it's gone 6.16 I'm going to press the lock doors button and see what happens objective complete right we're off to Chatham that should work no, we're not in forward. Ah, see, in reality, you can't take power while the train's in neutral. Off we go. Croucher Tiger Hidden Adam, what is the difference between air brakes and vacuum brakes in normal use? Uh, as far as I know, there are not, I'm, I, I'm probably completely wrong, but I don't think there's any vacuum brake stock still out on the main line. There might be some rail tours and heritage stuff that still use vacuum brake. I've never driven vacuum brakes, so yeah, I, I can't really comment on that. Okay, we didn't play locomotive location delivery, did we? Right, the third number was 156 Andrew with number nine. Let's play locomotive delivery location. There you go, guys, box number nine. I am still very much looking for a location on this one, guys. Still very much looking for a location. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, because we are coming to the end of the stream. I'm going to give you another box free of charge. See, see if anyone can get that location. So, 60 of you lovely people watching tonight, if you haven't already, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing. That would be absolutely brilliant. The Gaming Rascal. Would you ever go back to passenger ops? And if you did, what company would you go to and what routes would you like to do? Um, I would go back to passenger. I'm quite happy where I am at the moment, to be completely honest with you. Um, but yeah, if, if I had to go back to passenger, then I certainly would. Um, Great Western Railway, I think, down down in Cornwall, doing a lot of the Cornwall local stuff would be would be lovely. Fifty on the fifty. Look at that. Got a thirty coming up. T09 train spot says York 156 Andrew Carlisle Daniel's train still saying Carlisle C block's very helpful window too easy 156 Andrew Keith Jones Carlisle platform 4 there's our 30 a little bit of 2 just to bring that in the brake gauge functionality on this is not correct either because the brake gauge needle should not come up um once you put the brake on, the brake gauge will come up slightly and then it will drop back because the rear static braking takes over. Richard, the train spotter, and more. Very good, thank you, bud. Robert, if you see your friend driving, can you blow your horn? I saw that in 7 Oaks with the Thames when they passed it in station terminus. Uh, there's this really, really nice clause in the rule book that says the driver may sound the horn whenever they deem it necessary. Um, 
if you've done it sort of now and again, you're probably not going to get any issues. But doing it all the time, probably not such a good idea. Um, Edward Evans, Richard, is GBRF a nice company to drive for? So do you see many train spotters out and about? I see absolutely loads, Edward. Didn't used to see that many with South Eastern, but since I've been with GB, I see absolutely loads. We are an eight car unit for the eight car mark. So you've actually got signs on these that say three step checks that so we are eight carriages, eight car mark, platform on the left. That's incorrect as well because the buttons you would actually press to open the doors at the bottom two, all release and door release, you sort of have to press the two buttons at the same time. The, doors op the door open button you could then press afterwards which would actually physically open all the doors rather than lock them. And the SDO button, if you've got a short platform, so you've got like an eight car train, the platform can only take six, you'd have to press the door release and the SDO button at the same time, rather than the door release and the all release button. My scroll works really funny. Dad Rail Bud, is the Patreon only stream tonight? Yeah, there will be Bud starting um, at 21.30. 156 Richard, are you relaxed when you drive up to class 66? Yeah, generally speaking, to be honest with you. The, the class 66s are really comfortable. They could be a bit noisy at times, but I find them pretty comfortable to drive. More than Princess Production. How much of that is linked to your fame? <laughs> um, in, in, infamous, that's the problem. Infamous for breaking things. Into forward, we've got a green. We are going to Rochester. We'll do. We'll do one more, guys. Thank you for. Let's play. play locomotive delivery location. location. Post your numbers. I won't even play the, the jingle. Come on. Post your numbers now, guys. Post your numbers now. We'll, we'll do one more, then we'll do a reveal. Maxwell, Deborah, have you ever had to hit the chaos button on the GSMR? If so, where, when, and why? Um, yeah, I, I, I have had to press it, Max, but that's not a story I can tell on here, unfortunately. Ask me next time you see me, I'll tell you the story. Edward Evans, is uh, is freight unpredictable? So what's the latest you have to run? Yeah, freight can be quite unpredictable in your rostering and stuff like that. Um, for us, we get our we get our rosters um, on a Thursday, the week before. So you sort of know what you're doing a week in advance, but you know when your days off are. But other than that, you don't necessarily know what train you're working. Uh, yeah, Daniel's trains. I did mention that earlier in the stream. Yeah, I'm on four Yankee one nine one yellow four Yankee one nine. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Uh, Pig and Bob, you are the third one on my screen with number 12. We'll get into Rochester and then we will do it. Keith Jones, our feet on a class 66 desk frowned upon. No, no comment. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to comment on that. Right, we are on an eight car train looking for the eight car mark. We're red ahead. I've just done, just gone over the magnet way too fast. Banner of Peter is on. There should be no more than 20 over the magnet. I was doing about 22. That's the sort of thing your manager will be looking for on a, uh, on a download. So that, that's, that's pretty bad of me to be doing that. Southeastern driving policy was 20 at the magnet. Um, with GB, the driving policy is 10 mile an hour at the AWS magnet. We are all stopped, we are brake step free, we are DRA in, we are into neutral, and then we do our three step check, so eight on the S, platform on the left. Right, what number are we going for? What did I say? Number 12, yes. Pig and Bob, number 12. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. There we go, guys. I'll give you, uh, I'll give you a few seconds. 
and then I will do a reveal. There are a couple of people who have got this right already. Northern Princess Productions had a driver on a work course I was on, having trouble logging into his work phone. When he tried, when he tried to show me the issue, he typed his name wrong. We can't expect too much from new drivers. Absolutely, we're not good with technology. <laughs> Edward, I didn't, I didn't say I've been putting my feet in there on the dashboard of a '66. <laughs> oh dear, I oh dear. Robert, will they ever make work in TMS and GSMR? I mean, the TMS does work to some extent. You've got, um, yeah, so you can do your destinations and stuff. So it does work to some extent, but not correctly. And I've mentioned this before, this really bugs me. This little dot here showing where the driver is should be at the other end. It's at the wrong end. That's showing that you're in the middle cab. But never mind. And yeah, and the doors actually that we've released, I'm going to have to go back and check this now. So, G and F should be the ones on the platform side now. Yeah, there you go, G and F. So G and F are the ones that are open. On the MyTrack screen, G and F are the ones that are shut. So yeah, th that's been programmed in a little bit backwards. Interestingly, I'll show you this now, I bet this hasn't been modelled, but if you look behind door F, if I close the doors more specifically, the doors should have numbers on them. Right, this is door number one, so door F1, F1 Formula 1. Underneath this seat here on a real 375, 377, I don't know about 387s, you'll find a box underneath this seat here, next to every single door F1, you'll find a box, and in it, there is an isolating cock which will isolate the brake supply reservoir. Now if you get into the box and operate it, the emergency brakes will come hard on on the train, so don't do it. You need a key to get into it anyway. But it is more affectionately known as Schumacher's cock because it is next to door F1. And that's, that's how we remember things. Oh dear, oh dear. Right, lock doors. You should never lock your doors against a red signal, that would be pretty bad practice, but the, uh, the route is over. Objective complete. Silver medal. Not too bad. I'll take that. I'll take that. Right. Let's play. Locomotive livery location. Yeah, quite a few people have got this now. And uh, 156 Andrew, you got it absolutely ages ago. Thank you very much to Rob for this picture. That is a 397 Trans Pennine Express. And that is Carlisle, ladies and gentlemen. I think a few people got that right, but 156 Andrew, you got that right absolutely uh, ages ago. If you want to send me any pictures in for locomotive location delivery, you can do. Um, you can send those in via my social channels, which are on the screen now. Um, you can also send them to me directly via Discord. If you want to find out more about the Discord server, there is an invitation link in the description below. Don't forget to check out the community events section where we've got the um, National Railway Museum trip uh, in there as well. So that is it for today, guys. Bit of a shorter stream because I have a um, supporter-only Patreon live stream starting in about five minutes. If you are on one of my Patreons, do check your inbox or check the Patreon section of the Discord server for the link for that. If you would like to find out any more information about that or get access, then you can visit patreon.com forward slash dadrail for that. Um, I'm not sure when the next stream will be, guys. I Probably not until next weekend because my work schedule this week just doesn't allow it, unfortunately. Um, but never mind, never mind. Sorry if I've missed your message in the chat. There's been It's been pretty busy in the chat tonight, so hopefully I have managed to answer your question. But if I haven't, then come back next time and hopefully I'll be able to answer it next time. If you haven't already, guys, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing. Check out my social media. Check out the Discord. All that is left for me to do is to press that button there, which should start the music, and say, until next time, remember, create, share, and inspire.
thank you very, very much for watching. And if you do know anybody that might enjoy my content, please feel free to share this video and my channel with them or any groups that you may be a member of. Thank you very much for joining me and hope to see you.